recorded. Okay, thank you. We understand Nama Rupa is just the terminology or the concept to illustrate not just the, the physical entity, but it's the, the whole totality, the mind and the body. And the body is just the four elements and five, and other four elements constitute the, the mind, the feeling, the perception, mental formation, and the consciousness. And how can it apply into the <coughs> eight noble pathway? Take one example. If you want to say something, immediately the mind activate or stick to the the brain, and the brain will inject into your body insulin or the chemical item, allowing your tongue to speak. So the mind actually have the nervous system to control both chemically and through the nervous system. So you will speak because you think. And what you think is dictated by your consciousness the way or the material in effect the materials inside your brain and the material is cultivated by your daily action through your eyes your ears your nose always happen in your lifetime to the effect that when you see something Arising in yourself, the feeling of hatred or liking, either liking or hatred, and that liking and hatred will formulate what we call the consciousness. So, if you know nama rupa is just the the causation chain of causation from the consciousness to the reaction to your body reaction to your body activity one of which is the tongue the speech the action creating the sound in reacting to what you feel so one way you react unconsciously is to create damage to yourself and hurting the others. Another way is with the mindfulness, samasati, one of the eight noble pathway, you will know the consequence of what you said. So usually, when we speak, we have to put in a test before we speak. One, what we say is true. We have to ask ourselves the first test What I'm going to say is the truth or untruth. I'm saying what I'm saying is true or untrue. That's the first test. If it's not true, why we speak the untruth? We know the consequence of speaking untrue is the breaker or violate the precept. And violation of the precept will lead to the bad consequence.
The first test is so where, whether it's true or untrue. Second test. Is it benefit to you? If no, why you speak? Sometimes you get angry, you react and you speak. Doesn't matter whether it's beneficial for you or not. You do speak. So you are acting under your ang anger. Your anger is your boss. And you lose control of your daily body activity. Do you know the consequence of what you do? If you do know the consequence or the bad consequence of your bad speech, why you continue? Because you don't have the mindfulness. You don't have samasati. So if you have samasati, mindfulness, always it alerts you the consequence of what you should speak. The second test is, is it beneficial for you? If not, don't speak. Test number three. Do you yourself experience it? Experience means see it, hear it, touch it. Did you touch it? Did you see it? Did you hear it yourself? Not just somebody told you. So if it passed three tests, if it passed three tests, and then you can speak. One is truth. Number two, direct experience by yourself. Three, is beneficial for you and all other people. That is okay for you to speak. So five aggregate, if you know five aggregate and you can exercise some degree of control in your daily activity. And in order to control your daily activity, to create more benefit environment for you to live, you enjoy. The first thing is samasati. How do you develop the samasati? How do you develop the mindfulness? In the Machi, Machi, uh, Machiha Sutra, the Buddha said, contemplate mindfulness in your breathing activity. When you're breathing in, you know I'm breathing in. When you're breathing out, you know I'm breathing out. No matter what you do, working, sleeping, standing, walking, eating, quality, breathing in, breathing out. I know what I'm doing. I'm breathing in long breath. I know I'm breathing in long. I'm no, I, I know I'm breathing in short. I know I'm breathing in strong. I know I'm breathing out weak. You have to know, always following your breath, in, out, strong, weak, long, short. If you develop the continuous contemplation on your breath, you actually cultivate the mindfulness, you be alert of whatever happened in your body. So when you hear something, you want to speak, 
because you have the mindfulness immediately it come to your mind what you want to speak we need to pass three tests one is it true two do you have a direct experience to the phenomenon or the events or the information three what you want to speak will benefit to you and to others. It must pass three tests before you can speak. And that we call the wholesome activity. So the first test, the first thing you have to do is to cultivate the mindfulness. You have to cultivate the mindfulness by relying on the breathing activity in and out. So if you cultivate the mindfulness immediately, what is information arising in your mind? You know, is the consequence of the five algorithm. Form, perception, feeling, mental formation, and a consciousness. And the key is still in your consciousness. The hidden treasure is the consciousness. And the heaven is consciousness. The hell is also consciousness. If you pass three tests before you speak, because you have mindfulness, and then you actually develop the Nibbana in your speech. You cultivate eight noble pathway. You cultivate the treasure in your speech, in your consciousness. Otherwise, you are create the heaven, sorry, you are create the hell in your speech. You are create unwholesome speech and the consequence is leading to unwholesome daily life. And when you die, you will be reborn in the four bad realms. So it's up to you to decide where you want to go. What you want to do will lead you to where you want to go. Nobody, even the Buddha, even the Deva or the king of Devas cannot do anything about that. In no way they can interfere with what you want to do. It's you to decide what you want to do. And sometimes you cannot decide. Sometimes you cannot have a proper decision in what you want to do just because you don't have the mindfulness. And in order to develop the mindfulness to the full extent, every movement is your meditation. Not just sitting, but standing, walking, sit, sitting, talking, eating, sleeping, toileting. You have to be mindful. Of your body, of your feeling. The damaging in your daily life is the sexual sexuality, the sex life. Everybody enjoy it. It's no harm. It's a physical integration. It's one of element in your body, in your daily life. Life. But if you abuse it, you're actually damaging yourself, you're hurting yourself. So be prepared to say no if your body is not ready. Don't be afraid to say no when it's not good for your body. Like eating. Don't be afraid to say, no, I don't want to eat that. Not just because your mother cooked something and you try to please her to eat something you don't like and you get sick. Your consciousness dictate you or you develop a new consciousness by mindfulness. You have to know your body. 
This is mindfulness. Eating, sleeping, talking, toileting, bathing, sexual conduct. You have to do something with your body, with the mindfulness. Something you can do, something you cannot. Something you can do a particular time, something you cannot do in a particular time. Sometimes it's good for you. Sometimes it's not good for you. You have to know. And how do you develop the knowledge of what is benefit, benefited for you? Only by mindfulness. How do you develop the mindfulness? By constant observing the breathing, the breathing activity in and out. When I breathe in, I know I'm breathing in. When I'm breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. Observing your activity in whatever you do. Eating, sleeping, bathing, driving the car, writing a letter. 24 hours. You have to train your mind to be alert to whatever happened. And one thing is don't speak until you pass three tests. Okay, today I think that's enough. And today I give you a lesson. But tomorrow I ask you what three tests mean to you. You try to observe from today until tomorrow lesson. How many times you speak? Did you apply three tests or not before you speak? When your son says something to you, did you ask yourself, I'm going to speak and my speech will need to pass three tests. And if you fail to apply three tests, that means you have the mindfulness. And try to tell me honestly, how many times you fail from now until tomorrow? Maybe a million times. Don't be ashamed that you fail. No problem. Everybody fail. The important point is you acknowledge you are failing. That's important. Because if you know you fail, you will rectify your activity, daily activity, and change it, reorienting your lifestyle. Eating, sleeping, talking, and be prepared to say no to something you don't like and you don't see it benefit for you. Eating, somebody give you something. Don't try to please them by eat that poison. You have to love yourself first. Be mindful of what you do. <coughs> Don't try to react to somebody by violent speech because you don't like her or him. You need to pass three tests before you deliver speech. Okay. Do you remember three tests now? Sure. Uh, okay. I think that's enough for today. And tomorrow, you will report to me how many times you fail from now until tomorrow. Just observing your speech. Seriously, because it's one of the eight noble pathway. Cultivate the merit, cultivate the awareness, cultivate the wisdom. And the Buddhism needs the wisdom. Without the wisdom, there's no Buddhism. Without the wisdom, there will be no mindfulness. Without the mindfulness, there will be no eight noble pathway. Without the eight noble pathway, there will be no arahat, no liberation from the suffering. Okay, tomorrow you report to me.
Now I'm closing. May all the merits cultivated through our learning of the Dharma today will be shared to everybody. May they be happy. And may we always be mindful of what we do. We know the consequence of our action, particularly in our speech. We need to pass three tests. And that's a good thing to do, to cultivate the wisdom, cultivate the merit, to share our learning of the Dhamma today to everybody. And may all they be happy. May all be liberated, including ourselves, to be liberated from the suffering. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, see you tomorrow at the same time. Thank you, Master. Okay. Yeah. See you. Okay. Can you?